And Limerick about to come out. Kieran Carey has been held up by one of them where over there. And now they get the signal. Joe Quaid and the rest. Tense in the dressing room, we hear. But they'll rid themselves of that tension fairly quickly. Back for the first time since 1994. Wanting to banish the painful memories of the last five minutes of that particular final. Mike Coulihan's back. They're up on the canal end and over the cross and the Hogan stand here. Flags flying proudly. Will it be Kieran Carey's big day? Can he dominate his patch? Can he negate the influence of Martin Storey, the other captain? It'll be captain marking captain this afternoon, we gather. But then, of course, game plans can change in just a matter of seconds. Declan Nash and his brother Mike alongside him. Gary Kirby, Patrick Swellban. What an influence he can have on this match. And one of the great defenders in senior hurling, Declan Nash. Take a quick check then on the two teams. Wexford filled the vacancy at left half back with Larry O'Gorman moving back with George O'Connor partnering Adrian Fenlon. Elsewhere, Eamon Scallon returns to right corner forward alongside Gary Laffin and Tom Dempsey. Martin Storey goes for glory in his 25th championship match and bids to bring the McCarthy Cup back to Wexford for the first time since 1968. So a check on the opposition. And this is the same Limerick side which started against Antrim in the semi-final. New to the All-Ireland stage are four players, Sean and Owen O'Neill, Mark Foley at wing-back and Barry Foley in the half-forward line. The skipper Kieran Carey bidding to be the first man since Eamon Grimes in 1973 to return the Liam McCarthy Cup to Limerick. Indeed, he's promised it'll be in his native Patrick's well by 10.30 tomorrow night. Oof. Cameraman tried to get the best possible picture, but it's uh, all a bit chaotic. And that on the weekend with Michael Doxy Walsh of Kilkenny won his 12th successive Girls Sport All Ireland Senior Softball Singles title at Croke Park, Croke Park here, defeating Walter O'Connor of Meath 21 13 to 21 11. Well, that was last night. This is today, and this is what it's all about the 109th All Ireland Hurling Final where there's hardly a real favourite. Each county has lost its last three All-Ireland finals. Dave Mahidi there, just instructing the players who are going to start the match to pose for the photograph. Well, let's wish all the players the very best while appreciating that the next 90 minutes or so will contain every emotion possible. Limerick going for an eighth All-Ireland. Wexford looking for a sixth and Pat Horan, the man who will be in charge there this afternoon with his team of officials. He's the ninth Offaly man to take charge of an All-Ireland hurling final. So the smiling officials there posing for the cameras. It's curious that when you look at Wexford's record over the years, they have as many hurling All-Ireland wins as football, but the footballs, of course, go back to the early years of the century. Liam Griffin there, just wishing the officials well. And for those of you who are fashion conscious, I wonder whether Liam is in the shorts again this afternoon. Well, he's gone for the uh, legs of the tracksuit instead. Some of his players were joking that he hadn't the legs for shorts. But it's been that kind of marvellous atmosphere in the Wexford camp this year, matched by Limerick, I know. Well, that'll take a bit of getting off afterwards. Won't matter if they're taking back the cup round about five o'clock, however. It's been so long since these counties last met in the All-Ireland Final. 1910, the counties first met, with Wexford winning by 7-10 to 6-2. Wexford represented by Castlebridge and captained by Richard Doyle and Limerick represented by Castle Connell and captained by John Tyler Manley. And the only other meeting in a senior championship final was back in 1919. That was the delayed 1918 final and Limerick winning on this occasion 9-4 to 1-3. So it's a title apiece as Martin Storey comes forward now for the toss. Kieran Carey is already there. So cool heads required here in the heat of battle. And 
you think about how one county this afternoon is going to just enjoy themselves enormously and by five o'clock they will be in seventh heaven and for the other it will be sheer misery so let's see who wins what it's Kieran Carey has won it and I think he's opting to play from left to right in the first half as we look across there's a slight breeze blowing down the field So then the toss has been made here at Croke Park for the senior final. A final word uh, here on our panel from Gerlach Nana, Michael Dignan about this. Ger, one thing that struck me watching the two teams run out onto the pitch, Limerick looked very tense. Limerick are really hyped up for this game, very, very tense. Uh, it, it would seem that Wexford are a bit more relaxed. Now the danger time is now, you know, they came out, there's 20 minutes to go from when you come onto the field to when the game starts. Yeah. So there's a great chance they are being distracted or losing your concentration. And this is where the captains come in. I think their role now will be vital because keeping your concentration and diverting all your energies into half three, that's the crucial thing. Okay. And whichever team does that, that best will, will play best. Going to put yourself and Michael Dragon on the line now. Final prediction. I think the, the hunger that Limerick have and the desire they have to make up for 1994, I think that if they channel it in properly, I think they'll carry the day. Well, Michael Dragon, you said earlier that Limerick's campaign all this year was to get them here to this day. Do you go with Limerick? No. <laughs> I couldn't agree with Gerald Nan anyway. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going with Wexford. Um, I think that if they can reproduce the farm short against us, um, I think that they'll win the game. Um, the only thing I'd see danger is that Limerick's goal scoring potential um, is huge and Gary Kirby is going to score a lot of points and if, if Limerick get a few goals, they'll be in it. But I think, I think that Wexford overall are a better balanced side and I think they'll do it. OK, Michael Dignan says Wexford, Gerlach Nan says it could be Limerick. I think there's a good possibility of a draw this afternoon. Let's go back again to Ger Canning. Well, that would be the first time since 1959 that it was uh, Kilkenny and Waterford, of course. So as Ger was saying, concentration now at this stage to be focused on the throw-in at 7.30. They're lining up to meet Her Excellency the President very shortly. And our analysts and pundits going down along provincial lines, as it were. And uh, Tomás Smolkahi alongside me, uh, you have a fancy for Limerick as well, I know. Yes, just a slight fancy, fa just a slight fancy, Ger. Um, I think that um, if, if the, the whole lot of the forwards are going to have to play very well today. Uh, just a slight fancy. Uh, um, I think Wexler and were a very, very good chance indeed, but uh, I have a slight favourite for, for Limerick. Her Excellency, President of Ireland, about to be introduced to the players, accompanied by GA President Jack Boothman. This is Robinson now. Pausing. So the president moves off to be introduced, first of all, to Martin Storey, who will introduce his colleagues. By the way, if you are superstitious, the new dressing rooms over are numbered one and two, and the lucky one they tell me so far is number two, and that's where Wexford are. So first of all, it's the team captain, Damien Fitzhenry. Colum Kill there, who will be right cornerback this afternoon. Big Jerk Cush from the Nevada Club. And then John O'Connor. That's Liam Dunn and Larry O'Gorman, Adrian Fenlon, and the unmistakable figure of George O'Connor, then Rod Guiney. That's uh, Rory McCarthy there, Larry Murphy, Eamon Scala then, the corner forward, Gary Lappin, and finally Tom Dempsey from Buffers Alley. So a quick little chat there between the president and the Wexford captain, Martin Storey, she wishes him well, wishes the officials well also, I'm sure. And the smiling figure of Jack Boothman, and this is last year as president of Tottenham Lucas Doyle. And now the turn of Kieran Carey to introduce Joe Quaid, Steve McDonough from Brewery, then it's Mike Nash and his brother Declan. We mentioned that there are many brothers involved here this afternoon, Dave Clark, that's Mark Foley. Then Mike Coulahan will be hoping to dominate his patch in midfield along with Sean O'Neill from Maru Bohor. Then Gary Kirby, the leading scorer. Barry Foley there is a nephew of Sean Foley, who played in 1973. On to TJ Ryan via Damien Quigley. And Owen O'Neill able to play, as you heard earlier on, there. He passed the fitness test this morning out of the Luke and Sarsfields ground. So the president moves off. It's an absolutely terrific atmosphere here two counties who thirst for glory 
And I'm sure the neutrals in the country today are having difficulty making up their minds as to who to go for because we'd like to see them both win the cup. Yes, Jerry, I suppose, I mean, most neutrals, I mean, it's a far to team that the teams are in and haven't won it for a long time, and everybody wants to have a winner out of each one of those, but on today, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser, and that's the unfortunate thing about it. Yes, the highs of glory and the depths of depression when you lose, but right now the parade and a moment of great personal pride for the respective captains, the Artane Boys Band, together with the senior band, leading Wexford, who are on the right-hand side here. Martin Storey leading the way, just as Nick O'Donnell led for the Slaney Siders and was the only Wexford player to have captained two All-Ireland winning sides in 1955 against Galway and in 1960 against Tipperary. And the green and white of Limerick, Frank proudly up there on the canal end. And Kieran Carey leading the side there. The Shannon Siders being led by their number six. Aware of Limerick's recent poor record in finals, that's in All-Ireland senior finals and club finals, but he follows the footsteps of the great Mick Mackey, who captained Limerick to two All-Ireland wins in 1936 and in 1940 against Kilkenny. Limerick's last All-Ireland triumph back in 1973, and of course, from Wexford's point of view, their last success was 1968, a long, long, long time ago. A wonderful setting. People watching this match in so many parts of the world today. I've been asked to say hello to Jack and Tom Cavan and their friends in Wexford and Dublin. Also asked to say hello and best wishes to Patsy O'Leary and the Irish Centre in Brampton, Toronto. That's from his family in Bunclody in County Wexford, nearer to home. I know a gentleman who's in Mallow, he's uh, Michael Fahey, and he's watching this as well. And a former Wexford player whose sister wrote to me during the week, and that is Jim Ling. And he's watching it in New Haven in Connecticut. And Mary Cullen and all the Cullens and Lings wish you well. Hope you enjoy it wherever you're watching it all over the world today. We hope you have fun. Because of the traffic congestion outside, quite a few of these people on the newsstand over there didn't make it in for the start of the minor match, which was a great pity because they missed what was a terrific game. Remember, it is Limerick who won the toss, and they're going to play from left to right in the first half. They'll be playing into the breeze. Well, we talked about the breeze tomorrow a little while back. Do you reckon it has changed at all? No, Jarrah, I think it's favouring down the hit 16 slightly, but um, the battle has begun already, I think. Limerick have broken away from the parade, and uh, Wexford are intent to go on up the hit 16, up to their supporters, and um, this is one that they will cherish. Well, they haven't been here since 1977, you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> exactly, yes. They're going to enjoy this one. I think Limerick are very tense. We were talking about this a little while ago. Now, which approach would you prefer to be in if you were a player out there? Would you be one of the people who broke away, tense, anxious to get on with the business, make up for two years ago, or just have a good time and relax and enjoy yourself like Wexford? I mean, I'm amazed looking at Wexford are so relaxed. I mean, Martin Story introduced these players that their president was tapping them all on the shoulder, and they look very relaxed, they're smiling. Limerick on the other side, they've been waiting a long time for this. They've been waiting the two years to get back here. They've been waiting in the hotel room all morning. This is the moment they want, and now the moment is here for them, and we just have to wait and see how they respond. They look very, very tense. That's remarkable coolness by Martin Storley and by the Wexford players, just to continue marching along. There they are, looking up at their fans on Hill 16, thousands upon thousands. Wexford was terrific to be in over the last week, indeed over the last month or so. Splashes of colour everywhere. George O'Connor was telling me that there were tractors painted in the uh, purple and gold of Wexford. We've seen cars painted in the green and white of Limerick also here in town today. So there's the Nally stand, top left. Onto the Hogan stand, the old section of Croke Park, mingling with the new. It's one of the great days in Irish sport. Let's hope now the match can live up to that billing as Wexford continue to parade behind the Artane band. And Limerick now for the past three minutes have been in their places. Here they break. So Wexford have the wind at their backs for the first half. So 
a quick recap.